Well, hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time tonight. This is awesome. Uh, the festival is, what was it, about two weeks, right, Tom? Yeah, two, two weeks, weeks now at this point. Jeez. Still, feel, still feels like yesterday. Yeah, or this afternoon. Um, yeah. So, guys, I just wanted to introduce ourselves, you know, to my audience. Uh, first off, I'm Randy Unger, Unger the Radar, also proud member of the New York City Ghostbusters. So, yeah, how are you guys? Doing Great. Well. Wel- welcome aboard. Great. <laughs> And we've got Mr. Josh Himmelrich of the Massachusetts Ghostbusters. Hello. Uh, Bob Anderson of the Windy City Ghostbusters. Oh, hey there, under the radar. Hello. <laughs> and Ghosthead Tom of the Ghost Corps, New Jersey. Hello. Hello. What it is? What's going on? Yeah. So, sadly, the fest is behind us. Um, it was an incredible weekend. Uh, I know, personally, for me, it was one of the greatest, if not the greatest weekends of my life. Um, how do you guys feel about the fest? How do you feel it went down? Well, I had fun. <laughs> Good. It was it was like it was like a blur, so like like <laughs> a blur like a blur going through a rainbow cloud. Mm. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was it was it, it was magical. It was magical, but it, it wasn't just so much two weeks ago for it being the anniversary because. I, yeah. I know you got. I know you guys. I know Bob, and I'm sure Josh. You guys saw the announcement that it's going to be a year long fest that Sony is going to be like marketing for the for the anniversary. Yep. Yep. What yeah. do you mean a year long fest? Like they're going to do this like every couple months? Well, like not like the fest itself, but like all things Ghostbusters circulating, circulating oh, okay. around the fact. But I think I think also it's safe to say that it's also probably you know a promotional marketing tool for them for going into Ghostbusters 2020. Right. Yes. Milk it the, for all it's worth. <laughs> the 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 uh the untitled uh knuckle biter that I like to call it now. Right, right. You know, yeah. But we know we know Annie Potts is in, so that's good. Yep. Well, I, I, I know she said that she was, but we haven't heard anything from the studio and if you read the article that's really circulating around, she just kinda admits that they not only herself, but like Dan, Ernie, Sigourney, Bill, they've all read the script and that she would definitely reprise her role. So mm-hmm. that's um, when they had, I'm sorry to interrupt, when they had the panel with the two Reitmans, they were talking about what to expect from Ghostbusters 2020. And the person hosting the panel was saying, you know, what's the story? And has Bill read the script? Bill's read the right. script. Has Ernie read the script? Ernie's read the script and so on and right. so forth. That was like the only news I think over in in reference to the new film. They just yeah. read the script. Like, what is that? Yeah, uh, for what the... it's worth, for what it's worth, I am one thousand percent okay with the little bit that we got. I didn't need anything leading fan fest for the new film. I'm going in with my expectations where they need to be. I'll get a good trailer whenever the trailer comes out. Yeah. But I don't need to be overhyped going into the movie. I don't need to be underhyped going into the movie. Mm. I want to be 1,000% surprised. Because, Randy, you being a film critic, you know how it is these days. Oh, yeah. You I go never in, watch, you go I, in. I, I rarely watch trailers. Rarely. Exactly. You go into a movie knowing, you know, if, you get, 10, if you get 10 three-minute trailer or 10 three-minute trailers, you're getting 30 minutes of the movie already spoiled for you, you know? Right. So I'm okay not knowing much about it other than, you know, mild speculation. I'm okay with that. I'd really rather it be a surprise, too, because even Jason, you know, said himself, he wants to unwrap this thing like a present slowly and and for those Mm. to enjoy. And I really don't want to go back to the rhetoric of 2016. I mean, that was, Mm -hmm. you know, we we don't we don't need that, (laughs) you know, not to bring it up, you know, bring it up. But it is it is something that, you know, is behind us, but it's something to learn from, too. Right. And I I think Bob hit hit hits the nail on the head that I'd rather be a surprise. And then when you do take to the amount of those trailers and add them up, you know, it's a third of the movie almost. Right. No, so you yeah. don't want to be overhyped or underhyped. You got to be in that sweet spot. And uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it, yeah. it's, it's nice knowing like now, unfortunately like fan fest, you know, since that's, you know, the topic at hand mostly is there was so much going on. I didn't even get to see that panel, Bob. And I also try to stay away from those panels at the same mm-hmm. time because you know people, you anticipate people are going to ask those questions, and when you're in a position like Bob, me, and I'm sure a lot of others who want it to be a surprise, you don't want to hear any little tidbits, you know? So I'd just rather deal with the news feed on social media and go, oh, okay, and then read into it and go, okay, well, they've read it. They haven't committed, you yeah. know, there's 
Right. The, stu- the studio hasn't announced, but they have admitted that, yeah, we've read the script, which is a sad word, especially from Murray's point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, how yeah. do you guys feel about it? I mean, I mean, it's, 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 yes, it is Ivan Reitman's son, and by blood, he is great. And he is a very good director in his own right, but he's never done a big-budget sci-fi adventure film, so I don't really know how I feel about this. If I may, uh, again, I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to... <laughs> Oh, talk okay. a bit here, but um, you know, I like to use people like to throw the examples around a lot. Like, oh, this person's never done this before. No. I mean, if you look at if you look at Batman, the first Batman film, Michael Keaton went into Batman so Batman with um Mr. Mom, That's and true. Mr. Mom is not a superhero action movie, and that turned out just fine. Right, right. You know, right. Ghostbusters, those actors weren't paranormal, you know, other than Dan. They're, they're not, you know, going out and believing in the paranormal and stuff, and they're just fine. Yeah. You guys got to have faith in the studio and the director that it's going to be fine, and that's basically yeah, Bob's it, take on it. it. I mean, if it does have Ivan Reitman's blessing, then I guess it'll be, you know, okay. But I'm uh, I'm yeah. cautiously optimistic, that's all. <laughs> well, all, Sorry. If you remember at the screening when Dan said after, you know, Jason came out, it was pretty funny, but he always gets on that crazy talk. And he's like, yeah, Mr. Jason Wright going to make us three, four more sequels. I'm like, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. here we go. Oh, <laughs> Uncle Dan. <laughs> Dan. Yeah. Crazy Uncle well, Dan. I, I, I kind of think, I mean, all the little tidbits that have already come out a little bit, like the little shots that he does, like the Ecto-1 parts and stuff. Yeah. And he's putting a lot of, like, hard work into – Analyzing, you know, the the franchise and and, and yeah. everything that's going into it. Like like even just showing those dailies. I mean that that shows that they went to where was it, Kansas or whatever to find mm-hmm. those. So he's Not looking true. at all that stuff. Well, that's even at fa- even even at Fan Fest, I mean, Jason was really looking at the equipment and really yeah. analyzing and yeah. looking at it and taking an appreciation for like he was over by you know the Finchers. Yeah. And the pack was you know it was you know had the Phoenix you know, bumper popping out and everything. And then and and he was just like his face in that video when, when they posted, it. I mean, you can tell he has a genuine passion for it, but he's also like really amazed at the, uh, the creativity, I think from the fan base too. And it also might give him some ideas knowing from the fans too, like, you mm-hmm. know, some, for some of us, the equipment is what really drew us into the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 yeah. I think this fan fest really kind of helped broaden his, his eyes to, everything too like like you said with the equipment the fans and what maybe what we're expecting a little bit you know what i mean he gets yeah. that little insight from us directly exactly. and, fans, and, he, so. and he's seeing fans dressed up not only in you know in the usual regalia but all, as well as everything. the custom yeah. cosplay the, yep. the 2016 cosplays you know it, it was pretty awesome to see that you know it, it was just an amazing event. Like I really don't have any other better words to use for it. It was an awesome, good time. But the, yeah. the best, the best part about it wasn't the cast being there and mm-hmm. the never before seen footage. It's actually, you know, like Bob seeing you again and Josh and Randy. I know Randy yep. and I. You know, we see each other from time to time. Josh, but like for me to see Bob, it's been a few years, Bob. Oh yeah, you ain't and kidding, man. We yeah. had a blast. I mean, we took we commandeered that stage and had yeah, a we did. And, <laughs> and we and we and we had our way with it. Yes, I was a little um a little under the influence, but uh, I think it's completely fair. <laughs> your outfit, your your outfit though was awesome. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. That was um, I wanted to bring that to Fan Fest. I just didn't know exactly what I at what point to wear it. And I saw we had a cocktail party premiere. I'm like, that's when I'm wearing it. Yeah, it's definitely better than wearing it the next day. In the oh, I would have been miserable. Yeah. Bob, Bob stood out to everyone. He was like the Hugh Hefner Buster of of the of the screening. Wait a minute, <laughs> thank are, you. Are you talking about at the Globe Theater? Yeah. Yes. Yes, the that Globe Theater. Nice. That was an awesome, awesome night. Yeah, Great they had experience. a. You know, I was a little. I mean, it was a little bit of a ride from where we were staying to get down there, but yeah. you know what? It like the inside, the the special lighting effects that they did, the logos paying mm-hmm. attention to some of the key stuff for the fan. Like, it was pretty cool. It was pretty nice the way they put it out together. And, you know, the fact that you could have cocktails. The lighting effects at certain action moments, like the cues. It was a little cheesy, but it was pretty awesome. Yeah. I loved it. I, loved it. Well, I, I mean, was, when you, I was when very the, drunk, so I couldn't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> nice. You were right up front, too. Yeah, I was. I was front and, front and left. I stood with a couple of the Windy City guys and right next to the bar. 
right. and we had a blast. I didn't get a chance to taste the Slimer drink the uh, with the Crystal Head vodka. How was it? Oh, that? yeah, the $16 drink. <laughs> yes. How many of those did you have? Uh, I only had one. I tried one of the Marshmallow Man and then one of the Slimer. Uh-huh. And it was – both were good. But, he, you know. he, he was done after two because they were going a little heavy on the liquor. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez, thanks, making me out to sound like that guy. <laughs> hey, you're the guy in a, in a robe. <laughs> what about the, the the Bloody Marys at the at the breakfast the next day? Did you guys have I, I don't drink Bloody Marys, man. I was proud of the people that did, and it was pretty cool they gave out the – the signed Crystal Head vodka out to the people that did buy the Bloody Marys made with Crystal Skull. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, actually, you, you touched on the breakfast. I, I was, I was there as press, and I still wasn't invited. Please, uh, you missed a good time. What was, what was that yeah, breakfast the, like? The uh, breakfast well, was uh, magical. Yeah, well, well, Bob, the, the food was good for one. Oh, oh yeah. the food was the food was amazing. The staff was very accommodating. There was were, nobody. Nobody went hungry. Nobody went thirsty. It was, it was a really cool time. I had, I think, more of a, a magical moment at the breakfast than I think most Ghostbusters did. Mine was kind of like a, I think you, this phrase is like coming to Jesus moment. <laughs> and it was mine was like out of body experience. But I could let Tom talk about his for a bit. Yeah. No, I. Well, I mean, I watched Bob's face light up. So it's <laughs> it's it, it, it's a it's a state of euphoria for him, I mean, and it was for me too. I mean, like you know, I I mean, everyone knows from the post and things that like I do a lot of stuff with Ernie on the East Coast, which yeah. is always fun. And I've done a number of stuff with with Dan, but like to have all of them like kind of huddled around you for like a picture while you're mm-hmm. having after you're having breakfast after like an amazing night at the Globe the night before. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you're just in a state of before. You're like, oh, my God, like, my, my childhood, like, idols and icons are standing around me in a circle right now. Yeah. Did Did Dan Aykroyd pour milk into your cereal? <laughs> no. <laughs> there was no cereal. We did have pancakes. Yeah. Nice. Did, did, pour, did pour me a glass of water. <laughs> my, um, my, my favorite thing about the Class 10, um, it, it, I mean, it was a little confusing, you know, it, being a Class 10 – you know, package holder or whatnot. The whole thing. I, I brought my kids to out to LA for this. Nice. So it was kind of unsure if I could bring them to the breakfast because of how much we paid for it or not. But um, I, I was able to email them that morning, and they emailed me actually while I was at the breakfast that my son could come. And so I had one of my fellow members' wives bring my son there. Um, and I mean, he didn't eat anything. He just kind of chill, but he got to meet, you know, his favorite Ghostbuster, Ernie, you know, <laughs> and talk yeah. to Dan for a second, oh, which was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was kind of the magical yeah. moment for me at at the breakfast. That's great. It really and, was. You know, Bob, Bob you, do you have kids? Oh, geez, no. Don't wish <laughs> that on me. Okay. <laughs> no, I, you Because the breakfast, it, 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 it touched on something very special. It, it, it's bringing Ghostbusters to the next generation. And you, Tom and Josh, how does it feel being a Ghostbuster parent who is the father of a potential future Ghostbuster? What is that like? Oh, it's fun. I mean, me and my kids, everyone knows we we run around the house, you know, with, with the packs on and they're wearing their uniform. And, you know, now, now as they're getting older, they're coming to more events with me and stuff, and they really enjoy it, you know. Um, yeah, same with, know, my, my, same with my kids. You know, my oldest, my oldest Layla, she always wants to come to the hospital visits, but, you know, because of the policies and all that, you know, she can't go because of her age, which is understandable, but it's nice to know where her heart is Yeah. at the same time and, and through the same thing that we all do it for this love of this awesome film that we're celebrating 35 years of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, my son is a super big Ghostbuster fan, like probably even more than me now, you know, like <laughs> he, he, anytime we go out and we see the logo in like the smallest place. He'll point you right out, you know. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, he he was up at the parade a couple of years ago when I came up, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. He, he oh, loved awesome. going to all the events. Yeah, that was a good time. What was that that was right. 20, 2017, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about Boston, right? Yep. Okay. Nice. Cool. No kids right. for Bob. I can't. <laughs> I can't touch on this. <laughs> 
Oh, you will, Bob, one day. Then you're gonna oh, be please, like, oh, oh, geez, man. Yeah, <laughs> so Bob, Bob's going to be like, oh, hey there, little Bob. Yes, no, no, no children for me. But I will say, for what it's worth, it is pretty cool seeing the young kids out there really excited about the hobby and, you know, because someday I'm not going to want to do this, or maybe I will. But, like, I want to be that older guy on the team. Like, when I met, you know, my mentors in Windy City, I want to be that guy to some, like, 18-year-old kid who's like, I want to do this. And I'll be like, well, this is how you ghost bust, you know? <laughs> You're in, kid. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Bob, Bob, with or without kids, like, he, you know, he is great with kids, so you are. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> And that's really like one of the main things about what we do. Our charity groups, our activities is to just bring happiness to kids, really. I mean, with the New York City guys, we, we do the slime lab, and kids just, they love it. They light up. They love uh, but what's nice, What's nice about the slime lab that you do is not only, and those listening, and I'm sure I know Bob knows from hanging out and, and talking with everyone and Josh, but, you know, the New York City guys, like what you guys do with the group is you use science as an aspect of, uh, you know, education because you guys also go to the schools and teach them the science about the bonding of those chemicals to make that fun putty, you know? Right. So I think that's really awesome that you guys that take the awesome. time to dedicate that too, you know? So it's like, it's more than just, you know, watching a film to want to like play pretend, like, you know, right. there's, a sci- there's a science behind the equipment and there's a science behind something that all kids love and are so into, especially now, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, it's educational and entertaining at the same time. So, it's a great hybrid. Definitely um, is. So going back to the fest, uh, I'm curious. I, I get starstruck pretty easily. So from each of you, what what was the star at the fest that you went you know crazy over what, that you were most excited to see? Um, if I may, I've met everybody at the fest, but Dave Coulier. So it was kind of <laughs> like I'm kind of like you know. I met Dan. I've hung out with Dan a couple times. I met Ernie. I've hung out with Ernie a couple times. Maurice and I are on a first name basis, so it's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, all right, uh, who who's new? And I'm like, Uncle Joey. All right. <laughs> uh, yes. Not the not the soup Nazi. I didn't need him. I was too I, busy. I was talking to the man for like five straight minutes. I got a little video with him. He was actually very very cool. Um, I just didn't know why he was there, but <laughs> I can tell you why, but we'll hold that off after the call. Oh God. <laughs> I know, I know the story behind the soup Nazi. Interesting. Well, you know, there were a lot of strange random B actors and celebrities there trying to cash in on the, on the festival, which is cool. I'm not complaining, but it was just a little strange. Um, I saw Luke Rigno there. <laughs> I yeah. There was some, there, there was too much to do there. Like eight hours was not enough time. Like that definitely needed to be like a two day event. You know. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought it was originally. I thought it was going to be the screening on Friday and then all day Saturday and Sunday. But yeah, it was just way too much in one day. Yeah, well, I think I think the Sony lot is actually shut down on a on a Sunday, but. That would have been that would still would have been fine anyway because it would have just been us like it was roaming around. I mean that was the coolest part was just roaming around the studio. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I mean I did spend a lot of time by the main stage. I'll be honest with you. Got a nice sunburn on both arms, but um, it was worth it. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Well, the photo um, the, the photo op lines alone like took you know a couple of hours out of your day just waiting. You know, so not for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> My my uh my favorite person to kind kind of meet was actually honestly the Jason Reitman, you know. Okay. Kind of, I mean, he was walking around, and I mean, at one point at the photo op line, he came down and shook people's hands as they, as we were kind of still waiting for the photo ops, which nice. I thought was really cool, you know. But just to see him kind of interacting with all of us, as he's going to be the next one um, uh, selected in the movie. That right? that is cool. yeah, that's very respectful. Um, so. And I saw Ernie was doing his autographs and photos, yeah. and also William Atherton, very nice guy. And P- Paul Feig, I mean, he's always mm-hmm. awesome to see. I got to admit, another. Paul was like a uh, class act. There was a photo I saw posted up in the uh, little private group for the event. The one Ghostbuster who had the class 10 was like, respectively, I hated your movie. And there's the fo- uh, Paul signed the photo, I'm sorry, <laughs> signed Paul. 
<laughs> and then the guy took a photo with Paul where he flipped him off, and Paul just kind of, like, face-palmed. That is one of the best oh, oh, photos yeah, ever. Yeah, I saw that one. That was hilarious. I loved that. And, I mean, for what it's worth, I like 2016. I know maybe most people are probably going to unfriend me now, go on ahead, see you later. <laughs> but I like 2016. And, I mean, it's for the fact that the people, the fact of the matter is that people might not like Paul, might not like Paul's movie, but the that, fact that he could take it in stride, and when I got to watch the three directors up there on stage doing their thing, mm. that was a really cool moment. Yeah. And for Jason to call out Paul and, you know, basically say thank you for opening up this and everything else, I was like, that's that's a class act. Like yeah. the movie or hate the movie, the movie exists in our universe, and it's really cool to see that, like, moment of all three of them and Paul just being a class act, even with the people that don't like the film, that was still really cool. And I mean, the, Agreed. The, the 2016 movie really brought all this that we're getting now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, we, we were in such a lull before that where is there a Ghostbusters 3 coming out? I mean, we had the, the video game, but, I mean, 2016 really brought all the stuff to the forefront for us. And it, all it, the it, merchandise it, and stuff. Yeah, the merchandise, you know, but also it, it brought in a lot of yo- younger viewers, right? Yep. Which which opened the door for parents to be like, well, if you enjoyed this, like this is this is from this, you know, and they're <laughs> introducing the the originals and the classics to them, which is you know so important, vital. And Paul, you know, Paul has always been so great with the fans. He's been very interactive, you know, before, during the making of the movie, even now, he was, mm-hmm. you know, it was he was so he was welcomed with open arms by everybody. He cross paths with while he was there. Um, yeah. I'd say um, most tongue-tied for me would, uh, same as Josh, would be like Jason, because the odd thing was was when I got to the airport, this guy in front of me, I'm like, that kind of looks like, but it can't be Jason Reitman. So, like, he had his boarding pass sticking out of his back pocket, so I was like, <laughs> not trying to, like, stare at his backside, but I'm like, I'm trying to see if I see the name, right? <laughs> So um, I I kind of took a picture to try to zoom in. <laughs> <We're good. laughs> but I, Tom is creepy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm I'm direct director spying, but um, oh, was it him? Uh, well, it didn't it didn't work. It was all blurry, and then you know. So then he put his ear pod in, and I'm like, oh shoot! Like you know, now I can't even like say his name. But then like I look over to the right of him, and I'm like, no, this has to be him, and he doesn't have the ear pod in his right ear. And I was like, Jason. And then I was like, Jason. And he turned around. He's like, oh, he's like, hey, what's up? He's like, you're Tom. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, holy. Like, I was like, I didn't know what to say after that. I was just like, can I get a selfie? And I, I posted a selfie with him because we were getting on the same plane together. And I looked, I looked so retarded. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the interesting thing, though, was on the plane he was watching. I'm going to leave it up to you guys to at least guess. Guess what movie he was watching on his laptop on the plane? Uh, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. I don't know. <laughs> no. Bob, um, Bob, Josh, I'm going to take a guess. Uh, from, if if the, you told me a, Ghostbusters, that's that's too uh, that's too on the nose. obvious. Is it a Reitman or Ramis film? Is it a is it a no? It's uh, it's definitely a Reitman film. Hmm. Oh, he was watching well, Ghostbusters. Was he watching or, the first well, one? Well, he well Ivan was also a producer on this too. Stripes. Nope. He was watching Ghostbusters answer the call. No way. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Doing some homework. All right. Which was so funny because I, you know, I sent the picture of it to, to Paul. And, then, you know, of course, Paul goes, he starts laughing. He goes, that's hilarious. He goes, he's probably drumming it up for the panel. <laughs> Good for him. He's doing his homework. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Well, maybe he's doing it to throw in some Easter eggs, you know, for the yeah. people that did enjoy it. Who knows? You know, interesting. We all we all know in, within the Ghostbusters realm, they like to throw in those Easter eggs. You know, from yeah, you, know, you know, from Belushi to you know to aspects of the cartoon that were incorporated in the 2016 movie. I mean, Josh knows. Josh knows. He's he's the star in there. He's the paramedic who saved the life. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> Josh, what was it like working on that movie? Uh, as Bob would say, magical. <laughs> That Honestly. seems to be the theme tonight. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty awesome. You know, I got to meet all the four ladies during my shoot when I was doing my little scene there. Cool. It was it was awesome and yeah. Nice, nice. 
Yeah, now, how was the how was the interaction between between the ladies? Because as far as you know, my interaction, I've it's only been at the 2016 premiere, you know, at a distance as they're walking by, signing, you know, yeah. the, the front row fans. Like, what was it like spending time with them? Um, I mean, I got to talk to Melissa and Kate for the most part. Um, Kristen and Leslie kind of would do their scenes and then kind of go back to their green room or whatnot. But the the guy on my on the stretcher in my scene, his name is um, uh, what's his name? I forget his name, but he he's he's a Mexican guitar singer player in um, L. A. That Paul Feig like likes, and he's actually was in uh, the movie Spy with him. Mm. Uh, oh, his name's Jamie Pacheco. He's been in Ghostbusters, Answer the Call, and Spy with Paul and interacted with Melissa, and they were going back and forth, like, singing while he was on the stretch, him and Melissa. So it was pretty, it was pretty funny. Cool. But, were you, yeah, were, it was an awesome, awesome day. Were, were all of us at the premiere in, in 2016? Were all of us in there? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. That, was, that was magical, too. That it was, was uh, <laughs> that was, uh, that was a weekend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, was it. Yeah, it was. That was that was one of the Detroit guys slimy with those slime blowers, man. Those things, yep. they, those things, and they were there at the fan fest too. Those things put out some, uh, some heavy That'd fire. That's my That's favorite prop ever made in the Ghostbuster community. Fun fact: shout out to the Detroit Ghostbusters. No, it really is because <laughs> actually um, Eric um, had come out um, with some of the gang because they went to a concert in New York and they actually came and did uh, this birthday party for uh, this little boy Gavin that I was doing, hmm. and he actually had the uh, the ecto with him, so. <laughs> They brought out the act and they came to the party, and that was, like, the highlight. You know, like, he put us all to shame when that thing kicked on. The kids were just like, ah! <laughs> and then we're just kind of, like, standing there just, like, at the birthday party, just like, uh, want to grab a beer? <laughs> if, 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 yeah. if I may, yes. which weekend was better, do you think? The 16 premiere or... Fan Fest weekend. What do you got? Fan, fan Fest. Fan Fest. Fan, 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 fan Fest. Fest. Hands down. That yeah. was the largest Ghostbuster meetup yeah. ever. I mean, we had what? Bob, what would you say? At the Globe, we have like oh, at least 1,500 there, right? <laughs> I'd say I'd say 1,000 to 1,500. I'd say there was at least 25 states represented, if not more. Yeah. And I counted five countries. Yeah, we five. had five countries. Yeah, we had at Germany. least out, and I'm talking outside America. Yeah, no, yeah. We'll, yeah, Dave Ann from Germany, Naoki from Japan, Japan, um, England, Massimo from uh, Italy, Italy. Italy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Andrew Bayless from Australia was there. Yeah. Why don't they just do this every year? <laughs> because really that was uh, that was enough. <laughs> yeah. I um I can I can I answer that question. Kind of, sort of. So I did work with Wizard World back in Chicago when all of this was first going on. And I'm like, oh, I kind of was talking it over with those guys a little bit. I'm like, so is this going to be a thing? And they're like, no. Nope. It's it's a hard thing to get staffed and just to kind of get people out. I think it's up yeah. to us, the fan base, to kind of make sure that our fans are still connected every year doing something. I know Chicago used to do the uh, – Slime of Palooza. I know you guys out east have the Boston Parade. Right. Yep. And the so, I mean, it's like, it, it's up to us, their fans, to kind of organize ourselves every so often. But the good news is maybe we'll have 2020 to look forward to. I'm, oh, I'm pretty sure we will. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm optimistic about that for sure. I'm sure they're going to be doing some sort of L.A. premiere thing again. You know, absolutely. I hope. I'm hearing uh, rumblings, but I'll keep those to myself. Yeah. Keep, did, uh, no spoiler. That's spoiler territory. Yeah, ditto. Me and Ooh. me and me and Bob get little tidbits here and there. Ooh, nice. So, we'll we'll right. we'll keep that to myself for now. But let's yeah. just say it'd be nice to see everybody again in a year. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I but, would definitely uh, make the trip for sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, may I, may I ask a question, Randy? Is it cool? I know I'm kind of oh, invading on your no, territory. Feel free. Feel free. <laughs> so, what was the defining moment of for Fan Fest for you guys? I can tell you, mine was. Uh, pitching my show to Dan Aykroyd and having him listen and then come back around to ask me questions about it and ask me about <laughs> guests and stuff. That was my defining moment of fan fest. I heard that story and that, that is awesome. So how about you guys? For me, honestly, like some of you said already, it was the whole weekend was a blur and just, I, 
walking around. Okay, and- don't give me the cheap answer, man. <laughs> Dig deep. All right, You're so fired. I, so I mentioned the Soup Nazi. I'm a huge Seinfeld fan, and this is even, even related to Ghostbusters, really. But they also had Jackie Childs. Kramer's lawyer, the, the actor who plays Jackie Childs. <laughs> and I got to pick it with him, and I was like, you know, the Soup Nazis right over there. Like, oh, I see him. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a cool moment. But no, like, it, it, but the whole thing, it was just a, a fantastic affair, really. All right, Tom, it. give me a good answer. Um, repeat the question. <laughs> what was the defining moment of FanFest? What was like your the one moment that you just looked at him and like, oh. Yeah, that's that's fan fest or that's my coming the moment, whatever it might be. <laughs> um, for for me, honestly, it was it was the fans there, mm-hmm. um, because you know, like I've done a number of things with everyone that's already you know there, but it was really the fans because I got to see people that one like Bob. I haven't seen him in three years. It was so nice seeing him again. It was. You know, getting to meet the first time Naoki and GB yeah. Mac. Yeah. I mean, they, those two, I mean, are such, I hold them in such regard. They are Aww. so nice. They're so amazing. Mm-hmm. I do too to you, Bob, too. You know that. Oh, um, thank you. But, you know, just everyone, just seeing everyone and, and just at, all being love, no being hate, just you know, everyone just open arms, embracing everyone, everything of all ages, just seeing the kids there too. I mean, even kids like running up to me was like the coolest thing ever and like talking and saying, you know, nice things. And um, and, and also seeing the franchises that, that took time out to basically stay their boost and really not be able to get to enjoy as much as the fan fest as I'm sure we all did. Um, you know, Detroit, Arizona, Orange County, all those guys, you know, they dedicated themselves to just, staying at their booths for some of them frying in that sun all day. Yeah. You know, and so you got to see the dedication, you got to see the passion, but you also got to see the camaraderie between everyone that really made 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 it what it was, fan fest, that it was about the fans. Yeah, community. That's yeah. what Ghostbusters is all about. Teamwork, community, just being t- family, basically. Yeah. You know? Now, well, hear that, me out. Was, hear me now, out. Was that, me was, out. That, was, that, was that the cheap cop-out answer, Bob, or was that good enough? <laughs> uh, I guess it works, I guess. Um, yeah. that, that's fine. <laughs> If I may, just one one good pitch for whoever might be listening to this on the uh, the powers that be, right? If you don't want to make fan fest at the Sony Picture a lot every year, make it a touring show like Star Wars. Yeah, if it makes make it like Celebration. <laughs> Celebrations in a major city every year. I like it. You could you saw that Ghostbusters worked out. <laughs> bring it out. Bring it on tour. Yeah. Yeah. If not, having yeah. one central con in, in the middle of the states, this way it only takes all of us like a two, three hour flight to get to instead of a <laughs> six hour flight. <laughs> okay, yeah. somewhere in like Kansas or something. We uh, we hosted Simapalooza for a couple of years, and the last year we did it, we had sixty people from six states show up. So, I mean, if we ever decided to do Simapalooza again, it's that's an idea. I'm not familiar, Bob. Where is that held? Uh, that's downtown Chicago. The problem is most of the East Coast guys are doing their uh, Boston parade. Parade, yeah. Parade. Oh, so yeah. our parades kind of coincide. So it's kind of like us and them. Yeah. Oh, I see. So that's the that was the thing. But we did this uh, big Ghostbuster meetup thing and get belligerently drunk and watch me, you know, <laughs> do stand up comedy and stuff. That was that's. <laughs> That's fly with blues in a nutshell. Okay. Yeah, but you know, any time is a good time when Bob's around. So. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. My, uh, I'll just interject my defining moment for Fan Fest. Um, for the for the photo ops, I got. Nice. Know, last ten, you got like five of them. Uh, the eighty four in the the dual photo, I had my my uh, my son mm-hmm. in that one, and then the other two. I had my daughter, and mm-hmm. he was just elated to be in the presence of celebrities, and then eventually mm-hmm. she got to, like, get their autographs and stuff like that. So it was, so, it was just great to just be kind of, mm-hmm. you know, a dad with them, and having these little moments of, like, seeing their joy. Yeah. Well, Josh, you, Josh, you got to have the, the double Reitman photo? Yes. Yep. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. I see. I didn't get that. They added Jason to the 84 photo because uh, we were – yeah. Well, well, same while, here. well so, while we laid, <laughs> wait, we laid it in line, but someone had collapsed 
um, I guess from like yep. heat or something, and then like it kind of like messed up the time of everything because then uh, Ivan came down late, so then they just you know bun- bungeed them all up together into the eighty four pick, which was fine. It was an awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Photo. That photo yeah. came out great. I love that photo. Yeah, I went. It's a good photo. I, I went back for a, a Paul Feig photo, and they were doing the Ivan and the Jason photo. And they didn't really check my badge, and I was just like, okay. They're like, go through this line, get your Ivan and Jason photo. I'm like, okay. And then go get Paul. I was like, oh, sweet. Okay. Nice. So, so I got kind of double with that, but. Okay. Well, guys, um, I just want to just go around now, um, see what we're doing, anything, any plugs we've got, anything happening with our franchises, what's to expect from you guys. Um. Can I start? Yeah, go, go Bob. Of course. Okay, yeah, so um, as we, we were so said at the beginning, I am a member of the Windy City Ghostbusters. We have some really cool events going on. Um, at the end of the month, uh, next month, we're doing the uh, Ravinia Music Festival. But it's actually the Ghostbusters Orchestra Tour. Uh, so they're going to be playing Ghostbusters Live, the movie, with the orchestra led by the guy, can't think of his name, sorry, mine slipped. <laughs> but the gentleman who conducted Ghostbuster scores. Uh, Elmer Bernstein? Thank no. you. So Elmer but, Bernstein, they're gonna be doing it. so yeah. that show actually is like was supposed to be like a bigger tour, but nobody really picked it up. So we're excited we got invited, we're so we're doing that. That's like the big event. Outside yeah. of Windy City Ghostbuster stuff, I run a weekly web show called Bob After Dark. It's a paranormal, spooky, good time. Um, we talk about everything from ghosts, paranormal, monsters, demons, witchcraft, uh, basically awesome. everything you get from Ghostbusters, but on a weekly show starring me. Cool. Is, how that is, is that a good show? Is that a Facebook Live? or? That is a Facebook Live show. It's also live on the radio. I have an actual oh. studio. That's so, awesome. yep, and then uh, we're, the podcast version of the show will be coming out in the next month. So I got a lot of busy stuff going on. Sweet. Awesome. And then you could also catch out, uh, catch, catch the Bob and Tom seeker Patreon. You guys could donate money to that. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to getting cut off from here. All right. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Josh, anything going on? Um, the Matthews Ghostbusters, um, our next event is at the Menden drive-in on July 13th going to be for the uh, Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man movie, uh, double feature. I don't know what the second movie is going to be. Huh. Um, that's our next one. And then after that, we have our big event of the year, which is Boston Comic-Con in August. Okay. And if people were following along on the Massachusetts Ghostbusters Facebook page, we just got the epic rap battles of history Stay Puft costume, which we're super Ooh. to be uh, debuting at some of these events. So that was viewed by millions of people back in 2014, and we get uh, we linked up with uh, Epic Lloyd at one of our conventions, and uh, he remembered us and reached out and said, "We don't have room for this." There it is. So, <laughs> cool. Super excited. All right, sounds good. And last but not least, Tom. Uh, well, from uh, GCNJ, Ghost Corps, New Jersey, Ghostbusters. Um, got a couple of conventions coming up, like AmazeCon, uh, Monster Mania Con, and then we have some other charitable uh, functions, you know, that we do on a smaller base uh, that all the group pitches in. So, I mean, team team does a really good job. I'm proud of everyone that's part of my team and all the other groups that we interact. And we've done stuff with, with you guys, Randy, in New York before in the past. We always have a good time. Um uh, and outside of that, uh, for those that are that are listening, uh, if you haven't seen the documentary Ghost Head, the last day you can catch that on Netflix is July 14th. After a little over three years, it's finally making the end of its run on there. Oh. And after that, you can uh, still get it on DVD, which is the better way to go, off Amazon.com, because it has all the bonus features and outtakes, color, uh, fuller, uh, Kurt Fuller's outtakes, which are hilarious. Uh, and also the mu- music video from the band Hana Lee, that's also a New Jersey native. Um, and you get to see a lot of, you know, amazing stories that are in there, for those of you that have not uh, watched it. And sadly enough, because of time restraints in the movie, there's a lot of other amazing and triumphant and heartwarming stories that haven't been heard. So reach out to your Facebook and social media and look up your local 
Ghostbuster groups. So you'll find them, they'll pop up and, you know, hear those stories and get to know those people because there's, you know, like Bob and Josh and you, Randy, and, you know, those that are listening in. We just, This fan base is just amazing with, with tons of talent and, and a lot of heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's sweet of you, Tom. And it's only growing. <laughs> Definitely. It is. It is. So cheers to Ghostbusters 2020. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll see yeah. you guys hopefully in a year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Party some, on, Wayne. Some, some Party news. on, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and some news from uh, New York City Ghostbusters. Uh, there's a screening of Ghostbusters 2 in Rochester, New York, and then there's a screening of the original film, 35th anniversary, obviously, uh, in August. So, yeah, stay tuned for more updates on those. But, um, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for tonight. This was an amazing chat. And no, thank you for having me, Randy. I appreciate you. it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. Randy. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. And you know what? If if you guys are ever in Long Island, New York, I'd love to have you stop by the studio for an in-person, uh, you know, sit down. I'll uh, hopefully great. be back in New York soon. Well, cool. Bob's got Bob's got that studio money now, so just Bob. It's a biz- <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah, Bob's got the <laughs> studio money. <laughs> it's a business expense. You just write it off. Yeah, you write it off. Write that off. 